If you're building and installing a car audio system that includes a subwoofer, something that can be very handy to have is a subwoofer test box. A test box is a sealed box that we can place within the vehicle and actually test out different orientations. In other words, we can point the subwoofer in different directions and test different locations within the vehicle to see what has the most potential for sounding the best. Now in the Jeep build that I'm working on right now, I wanna make a custom layered subwoofer box that will actually mount above the amplifiers and the subwoofer is actually going to be pointing down in a down firing type orientation. Down firing type boxes are great for vehicles that have a soft top like convertibles or Jeeps. Now before I go through all the effort of making a nice work of art layered subwoofer enclosure in the Jeep, I wanna test out that location and make sure that it's gonna sound good. So how can we build a versatile test subwoofer box that could be used in a down firing orientation or can test other locations and directions? That's coming up. Hey, what's going on Fabrication family? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. On this channel, I do reviews, I do lessons, and I do tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, I hope that you consider subscribing. Let's jump in and start building this box. In order to get started on this project, I'm gonna be using one of my subwoofer box designs that you can get from my website at caraudiofabrication.com. This design shows measurements for every single board that I need to cut in order to make this box, so I'm gonna start with marking those out onto different pieces of wood, and then over at the table saw, I'm actually cutting each piece. A big tip for whenever you're creating a subwoofer box is to make sure that you cut all of your like dimension pieces at once. As an example, five of the pieces that make up this subwoofer box that I'm building have a dimension of 13 and a half inches. I cut all five of these pieces before I ever move the fence on the table saw. That way all of the dimensions are exactly the same. After I'm done cutting all the sides of the box, I then angle my table saw blade to 45 degrees because I'm cutting some 45 degree pieces that will fit into the corners. I now have a nice little stack of wood that's ready for some detail work. First thing I want to do is cut out both the hole for the subwoofer and for the flush mount. For this, I'm using some circle templates from my show sponsor, Mobile Solutions. I'm using a double baffle on this box, which is basically two layers of thickness of wood in order to have some extra strength and to actually flush the subwoofer down into the surface. After carefully measuring out the location of the hole, I'm going to rough cut the wood material by using a jigsaw. Now that the hole is rough cut, I'm gonna take one of the circle templates and apply double-sided template tape. This allows me to then stick the template to the workpiece and then over at the router table, I can use a flush trim router bit to copy the template shape. The advantage of using a router along with a flush trim bit is it gives you a perfectly precise cut. A perfectly round cut is important for making sure that the subwoofer seals correctly within the box. Now since this is a down firing style box where the subwoofer actually points down to the floor, I need to make legs in order to allow the subwoofer box to stand off of the floor. To make these legs, what I've basically done is made the side pieces of the subwoofer box larger than they need to be, and now I'm going to make a window cutout to serve as the legs. To create the shape for this cutout, I'm using the Mobile Solution Smart Frame System Axis Shape Creator, which is a great tool for really quickly creating design geometry. So here you get a rough idea of the shape that I'm going to be cutting out. I once again start the process of making this hole by rough cutting the wood away, and then I can stick the Axis Shape Creator template into position. Over at the router table, I once again use the quarter inch flush trim bit which allows me to copy the template shape to the workpiece. Now I do have two sides to make, so I'm gonna take the existing piece that I've already made and I'm gonna copy that to a new piece. Once I've copied the second side, I wanna add a little bit of an edge profile in order to smooth the edges over, so to do that, I'm gonna be using a round over bit. A roundover bit is a great bit to have when you're doing a subwoofer box port or any time that you want to smooth a hard edge. In this case, I know that I'm probably going to be putting my hands down through this part of the leg in order to lift the box up, so it just gives us a nice smooth surface to actually grab the box. I like that buttery smooth feeling, so you know what? I'm going to do it to the subwoofer box second baffle as well, as well as the outside of this piece, so whenever I pick up the box, everything is nice and smooth. Now it's time to play some adult Legos, get all of our pieces set up, 
out and build this thing. I take a look at my design to see how all the pieces go together, and I'm gonna start with assembling the top piece to one of the sides. This is the top piece here, and it's important to remember that the strength in the joints comes from having a good bond with the wood glue on all of the surface. That's why I use an old gift card to make sure that the entire surface is completely covered with glue. Once it is, I assemble the two pieces together and then clamp them into place. Now I'm using a brad nailer in order to nail these two pieces together, and what's important to remember is that it's not the nails that are adding the strength, but the wood glue. The nails just hold the box together long enough for the wood glue to dry. After I make each joint, I run a bead of glue along that joint and then use my finger just to smooth it out. If your cuts are precise, this will be an excellent bond and you'll completely seal this joint. You won't have to go back later and use any caulk. Next I'm going to add this side piece, and here's a cool trick for you to use during assembly. You can take a scrap piece of wood and actually put it in position at the edge of the box here and then push the actual side piece of the box up against it. And what this does is it makes sure that all of those sides are completely square with one another and in line. I completely nail in the sideboard and then once again run a bead of glue and smooth it out with my finger. Hot diggity dog dinglings! You can see that I've got the five sides of my box all assembled. Now it's time to add the corner 45s. The corner 45s help to add additional strength to the corner of the box and also provide another layer of protection to prevent leaks in the corner joints. Now they do also take up some volume within the enclosure, so I make sure to account for the volume they offset during the volume calculations. In a ported box, they can be used to help direct airflow through a port as well. Once I've applied glue to all of the surfaces that need it, I can now apply the first baffle. Now off camera, on the second baffle, I've used this template to make this little triangle cutout. I dry fit the second baffle into position and then trace this triangle cutout onto the first baffle. This is where I'm going to be adding my speaker terminals. I want to make sure that I can easily connect and disconnect this box, so I'm drilling holes in that location and then applying the terminals. Now I apply wood glue to this entire second baffle and I really want to make sure that the surface is completely covered so that we have a really nice secure bond. After all, the whole point of adding this second baffle is to add a little bit more strength in to the baffle since there's such a large hole cut out of the middle. After applying a few brad nails, the second baffle is now held in position while it dries. Let's flip the down firing box over here, and you can see that all the edges are nice and smooth, well, except for these ones. Let's take care of this on the router once again using the round over bit. Hey, there we go. The test subwoofer box is looking good. This will serve well for me in the future as being a test box because I can easily test different subwoofer orientations and if I flip the box over, I can even test down firing. If we take a look underneath, you can see how the legs really help to space the subwoofer up off the floor. Once I've connected the wiring to the subwoofer and mounted the sub, it's ready to test. If you want to build your own subwoofer box, be sure to check out my designs at caraudiofabrication.com. So, question of the episode. If you already have subwoofers in your vehicle, what type of vehicle is it and what direction do you have the subwoofers facing? It's always great talking with you guys down in the comments and I've been seeing that some of you guys are having conversations back and forth now. That's awesome. So if you have questions, be sure to post a comment down below. Now a quick reminder, all the different tools and materials used in this video are also linked down in the video description. Now in an upcoming video, I'm going to be using this test subwoofer box along with some computer software to actually test what location works best within the vehicle. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe, and if you're an existing subscriber, make sure that you turn on the little bell notification so that you guys won't miss out when I release that video. Thank you for watching this video, and a special thanks goes out to Jose, Eddie, Brian, Ali, Corey, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Until next time, design, build, and install. Thanks for watching.